Elon Musk, he said population collapse is the second biggest danger to civilization after artificial intelligence, in my humble opinion. And you know what? He's right. This is the most important topic we're going to talk about today. And, you know, this great Churchill quote is really awesome that the truth is incontrovertible. Malice may attack it. Ignorance may deride it. But in the end, there it is. We have a population nightmare coming our direction. It is absolutely shocking. If you're seeing this on video, look at these fertility maps. This is 1970. And these are the world f fertility rates, right? In the United States and Europe and Russia, fertility was two to three children per woman. Now it has just fallen off a cliff. You're going to see that in a moment. And then the fertility rates in Africa and, of course, Latin America and Asia were much higher than that. So it's always been lower in the Western countries and some of the Eastern countries too. But look at today. This is truly shocking. Okay, remember, replacement rate is 2.1 children per woman. 2.1, okay? And if you compare 2016 fertility rate, by the way, that's not today, that's 2016. This is as far as the map goes to 1970 it is truly shocking what is happening to the world we literally are running out of people okay now in terms of the real estate market you've heard me talk about this a lot over the years this is not something you need to worry about now or for quite a while but come late 2040s this is going to be a big big deal it's going to be a japan style real estate market where in Tokyo, you can literally get a free house. They're giving away houses for free. Detroit, you can buy a house for a dollar, right? <laughs> you know, these are areas where the population has declined. Detroit has lost about half of its population. You see the same thing. I saw an article the other day that San Francisco is the new Detroit. I don't know if it's quite that bad, but it's pretty bad in San Francisco. When the population declines, that is unfixable. It is the one thing you just cannot fix. It is a hard, cold fact. And in terms of what it means to the real estate market and the broader economy, it is shockingly bad. Shockingly, shockingly bad. As I always say, you can't have a country if you don't have children. You can't have a country if you have children. And women are the gateway to the future because they decide whether there's gonna be children or not. And if you mess with their minds, there is no future because they're the deciders. They're the choosers, right? They always say men are the chasers, women are the choosers, okay? And that's exactly what we have. Think of the old days. Think of that old show that used to be on TV. I used to watch the reruns when I was a kid, Happy Days, right? Happy Days, Laverne and Shirley, these old shows. And just think about how incredibly different the culture was back then and how in the 1950s, talked about this before too, can you imagine governments and corporations thinking, you know, as the economy is slowing into the late 50s and, you know, that baby boom stimulation that we had from the economy is now kind of waning and, and we saw that, you know, that relatively significant recession in the late 60s and then definitely the 70s was a trying time. So all of these, you know, in this like 20 year span, if you're in government or you're in corporations, you're thinking, what do we do in government, first of all, to stimulate the economy, to grow the GDP, to grow the tax base, to get more tax revenue in terms of the government? Well, we've got half of the population that is not working. They're not producing any income tax. They're not consuming enough, right? Because they're at home raising children. So if we want to go for instant gratification, we got to get them into the workforce. So let's create all sorts of dissatisfaction in their minds, in the minds of these women. Let's have the second wave of the feminist movement. Let's promote that idea, right? So all of these women will go into the workforce. And, you know, it's fine if women want to work and be in the workforce. I'm all for that. Listen, I'm a libertarian. I believe in free choice. I believe people should be able to do what they want to do as long as they're not hurting anybody else. But when it becomes an agenda, 
that is quite a different discussion. If you look at what's going on with like this sort of, I guess, well, you know, yeah, I mean, most people say when there's a sexual revolution, they talk about the pill and birth control, right? And the feminist movement. But, you know, we're in a whole new sexual revolution now, right? And I won't even mention the names of it for fear of being canceled. But this new sexual revolution, I mean, it's fine with me if people want to make choices. They should be free to do what they want. But this is not about personal choice. This is about an agenda to, again, lower the birth rates, just like the birth control pill did, just like the feminist movement did, massive reduction in birth rates. And remember, there is a huge group of people in the world who believe humans are the scourge of the earth, that humans need to be reduced, that we need massive population control, and they are winning. Okay, they are winning gloriously over those people who believe people are a resource. Yes, people do cost the earth. I get it. They make a mess. People litter. They make a mess. They, they don't clean up after themselves quickly enough, but eventually they do clean up after themselves and they create solutions. You know, I talked on a prior episode about a new technology that basically eliminates plastic, right? I was in Europe for five weeks and they're now giving you, I don't know if this is a thing now in the US, but I, I noticed it in Europe, wooden utensils, wooden spoons, wooden forks, wooden knives. <laughs> I mean, I never saw that before. You know, so everybody's in fear of plastic and some of it rightfully so, right? But there are technologies, people solve these problems and without people, you're not gonna have anybody to solve those problems. You need that brain power. Think of East Berlin, right? And think of why everybody was leaving East Berlin when it was under communism, right? Before they built the Berlin Wall, they had a brain drain. People were leaving because it was an anti-people climate. And so that brain drain was costing them so much money because the communists wanted the people to stay. They needed their brain power, right? And they were all leaving for the West. So over basically one weekend, they put up a wall, the Berlin Wall. OK, and I remember my first time going to visit the Berlin Wall to Checkpoint Charlie. I spent six hours there literally reading all these exhibits and looking at everything and tears were coming from my eyes. I just couldn't believe that there would be such a fucked up government that everybody would want to just leave it and they wouldn't incentivize people to stay. They would force them to stay. So if that was a brain drain and that was a problem for the communists, Imagine that problem on a global scale, a brain drain. When you eliminate people, right? When people don't have children, that's essentially a brain drain. It's the same exact thing. And we need these brains of all these people that are yet to be born to solve the world's problems. Without them, what are we gonna do, right? I mean, you know, you've probably heard of the Georgia Guidestones. There's a lot of conspiracy theories around the Georgia Guidestones. And in fact, one, uh, what, a year ago or two years ago or something, it was blown up. They blew up one of the Georgia Guidestones. But on these Georgia Guidestones, the message supposedly from the elites, I don't know, you know, I don't know about the conspiracy theories. I'm not really commenting on that. Although a lot of these conspiracy theories are very much coming true, of course. But it says that the world population should be 500 million people. That means right now, according to them, we are 7.5 billion people overpopulated. <laughs> wow, that's pretty scary. If they want to reduce the population by 7.5 billion people, what are they going to do? Are they going to create a pandemic or medicine for that pandemic? Maybe, you know, that'll be the thing. Are they going to create all sorts of movements in our culture that are going to lower the birth rate? Yeah, that's exactly what they're doing. Okay, so the governments needed more people. They needed more tax revenue. They needed more people in the workforce. But then the corporations needed more consumption because their business was slowing after that baby boom, right? And so they thought, well, you know, what if we could create a lot of discontent in the culture and we could get women to be unhappy, right? Where they were formerly, you know, relatively, I'm not saying all of them were happy. Of course, all of them, all of people aren't ever happy, right? You know, some were unhappy, some were in abusive relationships, some had terrible husbands, but some were very happy. 
right? And, you know, but what they did is they created all of this discontent, right? And all of the media and the movies, and it started really in the 60s, and then the 70s, it took off with a vengeance, created this discontent. And these corporations wanted to double their market share. And they thought if we could get people to either stay single or get divorced, we would be able to sell two coffee makers, two toasters, two beds, two sofas, instead of just one. Because when people are coupled up, they share things. But when they're not coupled up, when they're single and they need multiple households, then you're doubling their, your market share. And not to mention the pharmaceutical companies and the market share they've benefited from from this movement, right? So there's this great book I've recommended before. It's the epic battle in the media and the culture between Paul Ehrlich and Julian Simon. And it's called The Bet. You must read this book and you see who won the bet, right? One was saying we need population control. People are having too much sex and too many babies, right? And, and so we need to control the population. And then another one said, basically, people are a resource, right? People will solve these problems. I mean, look, why wasn't Malthus and the Malthusian economic school right over 200 years ago? Right? They, they thought the world was running out of resources back then when there were hardly any people on the earth compared to today. And that was completely wrong. We've created more prosperity, more abundance, more resources, solved more problems since then. It's an absolute miracle of human brain power. And if you listen to the anti-people movement, all of these problems wouldn't have been solved. The people wouldn't have been born to solve them. The brains would have never been here to solve these problems. So really interesting book you must read. U.S. marriage rates plummeting. I mean, marriage rates are just plummeting. It's absolutely shocking. Like, Nobody's getting married anymore, okay? If you were in the wedding business, that would be a very bad business to be in right now. Check out this little short clip from a guy who's been in the news a lot lately. Corporate America wants you childless, and this is a big change. A hundred years ago, big companies built housing for the families of their employees and then schools and libraries to educate them. It was the humane thing to do, but it also seemed to make good business sense at the time. If you wanted workers you could count on, you had to take care of them and their offspring. But over time, that arrangement got expensive. Employees with families demanded higher wages to support their children. And in many cases, they formed unions to get those raises. So labor costs soared. So what we saw happen there is we saw this anti-family movement in corporate America. And what did the big tech companies say? They said, we'll freeze your eggs, concentrate on your career. And I cannot believe the number of women I have spoken with. In fact, I spoke with one at Yacht Week just a few weeks ago in Europe. We were at a big party. This woman was a very intelligent 35-year-old dentist, Asian gal from Los Angeles, and I didn't even know her. But we just were standing next to each other. We each had a drink in our hand. And, you know, it was toward the end of the night. It was this giant party we were at. People were dancing. It was crazy. The music was blaring. And she just started talking to me about this. And she said, you know, I'm 35 years old. I think I really took the wrong path in life. All I really want to do is have children and be a mom. And yeah, you know, I've shown the world that I'm smart, that I can achieve things, that I can have my own dental practice. And now, you know, I said to her, you know, well, why don't you change your path then? And she said, well, now I'm, I'm just so committed because I've got all of these loans, student loans, loans for all the equipment in my dental office. And I, I've, I've got to stay with it and I've got to do it. I've got all these obligations now, you know, she just really wanted to have a family, but she basically told me that she had been fooled by the system. She had been totally conned by the agenda. And this is so pervasive in our world. It is absolutely shocking. You know, the corporations, they don't want you to have kids. They want you to freeze your eggs. They want you to focus on your career so you could be independent and powerful. And, you know, you could show those evil men and the patriarchy. I mean, this is like, it's insane. The, the whole thing that has worked for ever until 1960s, right? The whole system has been completely turned on its head, right? And again, I want to stress the point. I am all for freedom of choice. You know, look, I grew up with a single working mom, all right? I get it. You know, she was hitting her head against the glass ceiling when I was a kid, right? 
I'm totally into equality and free choice and people should be able to do what they want. But there's a big difference between that and an agenda. There's a giant difference and you've got to understand the difference between those and fight the agenda. Have you seen this show? It's a Netflix show that's very popular. It's called Sex Slash Life. This show is absolutely disgusting and pathetic. Okay, it's basically about a woman who married essentially the perfect man, right? And he, he, you know, he's a very successful guy, investment banker, and she couldn't get over her bad boy ex-boyfriend. And so she cheats on her perfect man husband that she has children with because she has to have the constant novelty of the chase of the bad boy, right? And I don't even want to say watch it because I don't want you to give it any ratings, but maybe go on YouTube, watch a couple clips about this show. It's absolutely appalling that this is mainstream culture. It's total brainwashing. 